A Cull in Krakow by many Muriel Dowie. It was while I was in Krakow, spending my days happily and quietly in wanderings whose vagueness I jealously guarded from the narrowing influences of the guidebook. My excursions had been governed by a principle which holds a vast amount of satisfaction for me. Each morning I had sallied forth and walked to the root of some impressive spire which had seemed to call me, and I could never tell the world of old houses and rich pink brickwork that I delighted in as I went. One spire only puzzled me. Twice I had started for it. Each time I had arrived, hot and interested, quite elsewhere. Needless to say, it gathered an imaginary importance, and I marked it down finally with a sporting eye, and started to walk it up scientifically, keeping it well to windward, and making use of all available cover. I skirted the somewhat French quarter of the town, and passed through the Jewish colony, and thence away by a road that seemed aiming for the open country, when at length I recognised my spire, caught up in a thicket of big trees, from which grew the long sides of a raspberry-coloured building, of many windows and a pervading silence. Silences slept in its courtyard, and beneath the empty arches of its doorways. Silence browsed with a brown cow in the centre of its grass plot. In all the rooms and ways of it, nothing was stirring. And yet it did not seem dead. On the contrary, windows were open, and curtains not a fortnight starched fluttered at its sills. My intrusion, for I intruded quite promptly, excited no attention, unless perhaps the cow noticed me. I surveyed the two stories on three sides of me, and the tower in the trees, and I could come to no conclusion. If it were a nunnery, which might account for the tower, why had it not the traditional high wall all around it? Why was it open to the little byway and gate through which I had approached? Where was the surly porter, who through a grating should have kept the world at bay? Now I do not need any one to tell me that my next act was inexcusable. I know this, but perhaps it was justified. However, you are to hear and can judge. I walked in at one of those doorways, choosing for preference, one through which a sunbeam was preceding me, and I set a resolute but reasoning foot upon the stairway. It was thus I reasoned. The worst that could happen to me would be to... Sample complete. Ready to continue?